In this video, I will show you how to save data inside your phone's local storage using Hive database. We will explore all the basic CRUD operations and also how to build custom classes in Hive by creating a complete to-do app. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as a first step, let's define a model for our task. Inside the lib models, we have a task.dart. So let's create a class for our task. It has an unchecked, is checked, ID, title, description, and also date created. Let's create a constructor for this and also implement equality and a hash code. As you see in the complete ad, when we want to add or update the task, we are displaying a dialog. So let's create a method that returns the dialog. First of all, we create a method called open add task dialog. This is after future task. It has two properties, it first takes a context to display a dialog, second we pass it a task. This is for when we want to update the task, we need to pass the previous task to the dialog. And we also return a true dialog, also of type task, inside which we have two properties, one a context and one variable dismissible, set it to false. This is because if we tap outside the dialog, it should not be dismissed. And lastly, we have a builder and return an add task dialog. So let's create our add task dialog. The first thing we do is defining two text fields, one for title and one for description. And then inside the init state, we initialize our text field to text editing controller. And inside dispose method, we get rid of them to avoid memory leaks. So inside our build method, we return an alert dialog. We first have a title that is add task, as you see in the UI. We also provide a content as a column. Make sure to use main axis size and set it to mean to avoid the dialog from taking all the screen. Inside the children, we pass the text field for the title. We also pass a size box with a height of 10. And lastly, we pass the text field for description. Now let's define our actions. As you see here, we have two buttons, a cancel and also an add task. So the first button we define here is a, a cancel button. And the second button we define here is an add task. As you see, when we want to update the task, our title and description text field are filled by default, so we have to take care of that case. So inside the init state, if our widget.task is not null, it means if we are updating a task, we have to fill the title controller and description controller. So now let's take care of our cancel and add task button. So if you press the cancel button, we're just going to navigate out of the dialog. But if you press the on task button, we're creating a task. We are passing an ID, title, description, and date created. And also, if you want to update the task, I'm just going to re replace my task with a new task. And the only difference is that this time we're getting our ID, date created, and is checked from previous task. And lastly, let's navigate out of the dialog, but this time, don't forget to pass a task. So this is the result of our dialog. So now let's define our UI for the task list style. At the beginning, let's return a padding. We have a padding of 16 from all the sides. And then we have a row because we have two parts and we have the left part and we also have the right part. So for the left part, we have an expanded with a flex of six inside which we have a column. And for the right part, we have another expanded widget with a flex of four and inside which we have a row. So inside the left part, let's add two texts. The first text is our title and the next text is our subtitle. You should notice that inside the decoration, we said that if the task is this check, we put a line through, otherwise this is null. So inside the right part, we have three buttons. The first button is a delete button with an icon of delete. Inside the onPress, we pass a onDelete handler. We have defined our onDelete handler inside the task list style constructor. We also have a non-edit handler. So the second button is going to be an edit button. It is also using an onEdit handler as the onPress. And the last button is a checkbox. Its value is going to be the task that is checked. And inside the unchanged property, we change the task that is checked and set it to the value. And lastly, we do a set state to update the UI. So with this, our UI for the task list style is complete. Now that we have defined all the parts, let's put them together and finish our application. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go inside the task screen and define a floating action button. This is responsible for adding a task. So inside the on press, we first of all make it async, and then we get a task from open add task dialog. 
and we should wait on it because it's a future. So then I'm gonna check if the task is not null. If it is not null, I'm gonna add the task to the list of tasks. This is the list that I have defined inside our model. And this list is gonna hold all the tasks we have in this application. Right now, I'm not using a database, but in the next section, we're gonna be using Hive to store our tasks. After adding a task, let's set it and make sure that our task is displayed. So if we now hit save, you see that we have our floating action button. And if we click on it, open this dialog. So now let's take care of deleting or editing a task. Inside the undelete, I'm gonna say, go to the list of tasks and remove where the element.id is equal to the task ID. This is gonna delete our task according to the ID. And then we're gonna set state to update the UI. Inside the unedit, we're gonna first of all make the function async. And then we're gonna get the new task. So updating a task is very similar to adding a task. We again use open add task dialog. But this time we're gonna pass the previous task and get our new task. So let's check if the task is null. If it is not null, we first of all remove it from the, from the list of tasks and add the new task at the beginning. So now we do a steady state to update the UI. So now you see that we can edit a task or also delete a task. Hive is a lightweight and blazing fast NoSQL database that is written in pure Dart. It allows you to store your data as key value pairs inside your device. To be able to use Hive in our Flutter application, we need to add four dependencies. Inside the dependencies, let's add Hive and Hive Flutter. And inside the dev dependencies, let's add Hive Generator and also Build Runner. We also need to initialize Hive before our application runs. For that purpose, before the run app, we first of all do the Flutter widget binding, import Hive, make this method async, and lastly, initialize Hive. By default, Hive supports all primitive data types, including map, list, date time, and also UINT at list. But if you want to store a more complex data type, like a task, you need to create an adapter. To create an adapter, you can either write it manually or generate it. In this tutorial, we're gonna generate an adapter. For that purpose, let's first of all add this line. So this is name of the generated adapter. And as we don't have it, it's turned red. We also need to annotate each of our class with a hive type and pass it an ID that can be between zero and 255. We also need to annotate each of our fields with a high field that also need an ID. This ID should be unique. So let's annotate all our fields. Let's hit save and run this command in the terminal. And when you hit enter, now you can see that an adapter is being generated for us. Now that we have created our adapter, let's also register it. So on top of init flutter, Let's register our adopter. This is of type task, of course. Let's also open our box. A box in Hive is very similar to a table in SQL. And before using any box, we also need to open it. Opening a box means all the data it holds is gonna be loaded into memory so that it would be very fast to load them. So make sure you open your box somewhere at the top of our application, like inside the main.dart. So let's learn how to add a task to Hive. In order to add the task we have to Hive, all we need to do is to access the box and then use a put method. Put method takes two parameters. One is the key for which we are using task.id and one is the value that we are storing our task. So let's now get rid of set set method because we no longer need it. So updating a task is very similar. Inside the onEdit, we're gonna write the same code that we use for adding a task. So we go inside the task and pass the ID and if the ID exists, we're going to override the task and we also need to get rid of set state. And lastly, let's learn how to remove a task. And to remove a task, all we need to do is to get a box and also use the delete method and pass the ID. So as the last step, I'm going to add a feature to be able to display the tasks. So for that, I'm going to wrap my listview.builder with a value listenable builder. We use a value listenable because if we add or remove a task, our list of tasks is going to be updated automatically so inside the value listenable i'm gonna say hive.box tasks.listenable inside the builder we have a context a box and a child so let's use our box to get list of tasks inside the box i'm gonna go to the values 
that is an iterable of tasks. I'm gonna save it inside the tasks and inside list view builder, I'm gonna get every single task using the tasks.element at index. So now if we hit save, we can now add a task and display a task. So let's try it out. And as you see, we successfully added the task. I will also update a task. And we can also remove a task. So the last change I want to bring to this app to is to save this check status to the database. Right now you see that our S check status is not saved in the database. So if we press hot restart, our app is check is gonna re reset. But this is very easy. All you need to do is to go to the Hive database and put the new task. We get the same ID as the old task. But this time when creating our task, we're gonna set S check to widget.task.scheck. So this way when we check or uncheck our task, it is gonna be saved in the database. So let's now hit save. And see if we press hot restart our s check does not change so that was all for today's tutorial i hope you enjoyed it see you in the next one